Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's fur video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's fur video. So day 10 is going to take us to the 31st of May. Can you believe that? Last day of May and uh, last day of meteorological uh, spring as well um, in 10 days' time. So that'll take us to the 31st of May. We'll be able to extend out beyond that uh, to uh, today's 10 to 14 with the uh, extended uh, GFS and ECM ensembles. And have a look at the CFS V2 for June itself at the end of the video. So, uh, going to be a bit of an extended look ahead, uh, and I'll get on that for you uh, in a second. Just say that the first year release today was our nice little 7 a.m. forecast. Uh, we also uh, released uh, GMA Friday as well, as was our Friday month head look ahead, and we're going to have an update for Bank Holiday Weekend for you uh, busy. Please like, share, subscribe, all of that good stuff on video. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that for us. Right, so let's begin in the Challenger Atlantic then talked about this yesterday, generated a lot of interest uh, yesterday's video, talking about the chance that we might have uh, another uh, big uh, Atlantic hurricane slash tropical storm season on our hands. So if you did not see yesterday's video, do check it out. It's an interesting uh, watch, especially the first five or so minutes of the video, even if I say so myself. Uh, so this is how things are currently looking. Though. So that orange X we had yesterday uh, in the subtropical Atlantic has now gone red. Gone into a red X here on the National Hurricane uh, Center uh, chart. So it's disturbance one. It's got an 80% chance of cyclone formation in the next 48 hours. They're saying a non tropical uh, low pressure area located about 500 miles east northeast of Bermuda is producing winds to storm force and disorganized showers and thunderstorms. The low is expected to be west southwestward over warmer waters during the next day or so and it will likely become a subtropical cyclone later today or on Saturday near or to the northeast of Bermuda. Thereafter, the low is forecast to move northeastward into more hostile environment uh, by Saturday night and Sunday. And so that should be the end of that. So uh, it looks like this is still on course to be a named subtropical storm in the next few hours. We'll see uh, what's happening there. You'll notice we also have a yellow X just here in the Gulf of Mexico that's popped up uh, as well. So that one is disturbance two. Uh, but only with a 20% chance of cyclone formation in uh, in the next 48 hours, and 20% chance in the next five days. So I don't think you have to worry too much uh, about that, although they do say environmental conditions are expected to be marginally conducive uh, for development before the system moves inland over northwestern Gulf tonight. So it might suddenly pop up that in the next year. But I don't think I have to worry too much about that one. But this one could well become a named uh, subtropical storm in, uh, the next, uh, in the next few hours. Now, this is very, very early days, of course. So that's uh, what yesterday's video, uh, you know, was explaining. That this is very, very early days. We're, we're not even into the official start of the... Atlantic uh, hurricane and uh, storm season yet. That won't be until the 1st of June that we have the official start. So outside of the uh, official start of the season, we're already seeing uh, sort of disturbances and disturbance areas. Uh, we have a warm tropical Atlantic and subtropical Atlantic uh, again this year. Uh, there's no sign of El Nino, which could have a dampening effect on uh, on the uh, uh, on the hurricane season, if that was to get going, but it's not much sign of El Nino. It looks like it's either going to be Enzo Nutri or possibly even going back to uh, La Nina. Um, so uh, it all looks as pretty well primed for quite a big season, and we talk about this in depth in yesterday's 10 to 14 days. So do check that out if you have not yet done so. It is quite an interesting watch, and feedback on that has been. Uh, really, really good. Right, so uh, let's come back close to home then. Another wild day out there again. Uh, so we've got this uh, yellow wind warning still in force from the UK Met for England and Wales, southern, southwestern, and also southeastern parts of in England uh, within this uh, wind warning area. 
this area has expanded a little bit into East Anglia. That was not showing up, you know, uh, last night. Uh, so the warning colours like west and south and southwest Wales, southwest England, through the south coast, up towards, uh, between sort of um, Bristol to London, so up towards the M4, a little bit north of the M4, uh, up to Oxford, I suppose. And then into East Anglia and southeastern England. This is valid, valid until 9 o'clock tonight. They're saying a windy weather will lead to some travel disruption and power damage to uh, damage to temporary outdoor structures uh, of course the trees are in full leaf and um, and so it doesn't take that much in way of wind to blow down branches and possibly even to blow down trees you know when they're uh, heavily laden uh, with their leaves so uh, take care if you're off out and about across the southern half of the country uh, this afternoon not only wind of course we've also got uh, loads of rain as well. This is the latest radar picture from the weather outlook showing that we've got uh, we've got rain pretty much across all parts of the country. It is a little bit showery in nature, so some areas uh, are dry. There's a drier start, for example, there from Sheffield to Lincoln. Uh, another drier start in towards the west, southwest Midlands, but more rain is across Wales, southwest England. And generally, I think most places are going to get some rain through the course of today, and some of it will be heavy and persistent. Of course, driving and squally rain as well with these uh, very strong winds. Uh, these are our gusts from XC uh, Weather. So latest gusts, uh, strongest gusts, is 66 miles per hour uh, just there on the Isle of Portland. Generally, you see that the strongest winds are running along the south coast at the moment, but it's also very windy around west and southwestern parts of Wales, southwest England, and pretty strong winds pushing through East Anglia as well. In fact, the whole country is quite windy, but, but it is down in this southern part of the country where we've got the strongest of the winds. The winds aren't as strong, aren't as intense further north. Not only wet and windy temperatures are atrocious uh, yet again today. We have reached 14 degrees, 57 Fahrenheit in the far southeast and also uh, just there at Keswick in northwest England. But, uh, I mean, that's a midday temperature of 14 degrees uh, late on in May. That's pretty bad. It's about 3 or 4 degrees below average. But other areas are even colder than that. So, for example, at Western, we're only at 9 degrees, not even into uh, double digits. 12 degrees at Church Lawford, 12 at uh, East Midlands, 11 at Marham, 12 at Norwich. Uh, Hereford is at 11. We've got Northwick at 9 degrees into Wales. Lake Burnwy is at uh, 9 and Capel Curry is at 10. Real is at 11. Northern England got Leeming at 12. We've got Newcastle at 12. We've got Carlisle at 13. Walney Island is at 12 degrees. Belfast is at just 10 degrees. 11 at Presswick, uh, Strathallan is at 10, and then just 6 degrees at Abbeymore, Inverness at 8, Outnahara at 8, and Aberdeen is at 8 degrees. So it's even colder in the north, actually. Temperatures are paid back into single digits across uh, much of central northern and eastern Scotland. Elsewhere, we're just about scraping into double digits. Uh, but these are really bad t temperatures yet again uh, for like a late May afternoon. So it is another cold, wet and windy day out there. And of course, under, in the wind and rain, it will feel even colder than the thermometer has uh, is suggesting. So it's so a cold, wet, windy, uh, very uh, miserable and inclement sort of uh, afternoon. Um, so perhaps an afternoon for, for staying indoors and watching uh, Gav's weather videos, maybe. Right, uh, this is how the QBO, if I was just having a look at this, this is how the QBO is looking. Look at this. Uh, so we have we are seeing the QBO descending. DC QBO descending. Uh, this is normally sort of thing we look at uh, on the sunny round, but I thought I'd just give a little plug for the kind of thing we do on the Sunday Roundup in this video. So uh, this is from NASA. Uh, so you have to think of this as like the layers of the atmosphere. This is the very top of the atmosphere in the stratosphere, 10 HPA. Uh, this is 30 to 50 HPA, uh, around uh, 20,000 feet. Uh, and, and so uh, this is like the boundary level of the troposphere. That's where weather is taking place, uh, of course. So um, we see these uh, QBO. QBO is just an index that's sort of reflecting atmosphere. It doesn't drive anything in its own terms. Uh, it just tells us 
the strength of the zona west is basically so when you're in an easy qbo you weaken the zona westerlies uh and in the winter that can coincide with an increased chance of blocking when you're in a west qbo you strengthen the zona west is basically and, and that could be like a minor wetter windier type uh signal now you can see from the blue colors here uh, that we have got the easy qbo we have had the easy qbo for several months in the stratosphere and that has where it has been uh lurking in that level of the atmosphere you know, at around 10 HPA. But you can clearly see, you can clearly see it so well now that there is a dissension of the uh, Eastly QBO from the stratosphere down to the troposphere. A nice, smooth-looking path of that Eastly QBO is uh, moving from the stratosphere into the stratosphere compared to last year when we had a failure of the ECQBO. So last year we did have the ECQBO in the stratosphere, but look at the difference this year to last year. Let's get rid of all that. Look at the difference from this year to last year. So you can see how uh, the, the QBO, uh, you know, ECQBO tries to get into the troposphere, but never really quite pulls it off. Uh, just, just continues to sit there in the stratosphere, it never quite gets down into the troposphere, so not in a smooth manner, whereas this time we see that, that the ECQBO is moving from the, stratosphere, from the troposphere to the stratosphere in a very smooth type fashion. Uh, so I think I think this is it. I think the ECQBO is well and truly uh, descending now into the, into the uh, troposphere. I can't see any reason why we will not go into a proper easterly QBO phase this time. You can clearly see the difference between last time we had the failure of the easterly QBO to this time, where it's a nice, smooth looking uh, movement from uh, the stratosphere to the troposphere. So I'm pretty confident in calling this now that we are going into the easterly QBO. We will see the easterly QBO strengthening within the troposphere through this summer and by, you know, all and winter 2021 22 we should be in a proper sort of mature strong easterly qbo uh phase so i would expect the winter of 2021-22 to be a genuine proper easterly qbo uh winter could be quite a strong easterly qbo uh by by then you know another another six months on or so uh, so yeah, that's the kind of thing to look at on the Sunny Roundup anyway. So if, if you found that interesting, man, make sure you check out uh, Gaswell and Sunny Roundup every Sunday, released around lunchtime, and uh, we look at all of that kind of stuff in the Sunny Round. So a nice little plug there for, for Gaswell and his Sunday Roundup. Right, let's move on then and have a look at the GFS Upper Air Temperature and Precipitation Ensembles the next couple of weeks. Uh, so the red line is 30 year Upper Air Temperature Average or Cambridge. Only Cambridge today. So for the next week uh, at least we're going to be below average again with the upper air temperatures. It remains very chilly if not quite cold. Into the final days of May and the beginning of June we may start to see a little bit of a recovery in those upper air temperatures starting to, to take place going back towards the long term 30 year average but it is a slow old it is a slow old do you know to lift most temperatures back up to average there's no sign at all really of anything uh particularly warm coming up the, the warmest on some of the members of these was up here but they are actually at the warmest end of the range anyway getting close to 10 so it's 850 HPA. But I think we just say that we're likely to get a bit of a recovery in the temperature uh, for the start of June and leave it there. There's no sign of anything sustained, you know, uh, warm to hot uh, uh, at all on that, on that graph. Just a bit of a recovery from the cold temperatures that we've had over the past few weeks and we'll have for the next few days. Precipitation-wise, lots more rain to come into the beginning of next week and a little bit of a drying trend. Again, let's not go overboard with that. There are still precipitation spikes there, so it's likely to remain quite showery, just not as wet as it has been. And then by the very end of the GFS run, which of course extended, so steady rain, so uh, unreliable, by the very end of the GFS run, we may actually be starting to see signs when it's getting wetter. <laughs> um, again, so any sort of drier, uh, a more high pressure uh, influence type weather could well be quite short-lived, I think, at the moment. 
Temperature anomalies from the 21st of May 29th are going to be below average, not just the UK, but through most parts of Europe. Rinse repeat on that. It's been a long run of coral and average temperature anomalies. Another, uh, another you know, uh, week of uh, coral and average temperature anomalies to come. And precipitation anomalies from the 21st, 29th of May can be wetter than average in most parts of the UK and idle. Average to wetter than average. Latest wind flow map from Earth, nullschool.net, shows that we're under a dartboard. Uh, look at this. We're under a dartboard low. Its centre is across northern England. Strong use of the winds uh, around that low pressure on the southern side. That's where we've got gale force gusts up to 50, 60 miles per hour around some of those southern, western and southwestern uh, coastal areas. As the low clears into the North Sea as well, uh, overnight into tomorrow, and you see that wind is pulling back into the north again, so bringing uh, more northerly winds. If we drag this down and look north, you can see that this northerly is coming from a long way north, uh, actually. So the orange, origins of the air with this northerly will be uh, well up in towards the Arctic, around Svalbard, for example, and uh, pushing right way down into the UK. So uh, we're actually going to see a temperature probably getting even colder, if anything, as we move uh, into the weekend. And don't be surprised if we have some, uh, if we have some uh, very, very late frost. Tonight, that's likely to be across Scotland, especially in the Scottish Glens. Uh, tomorrow night, that could be a little bit more widespread into other parts of the country. So it could become unusually cold, actually, uh, over this weekend. Right, let's put the webcam uh, back up, then we'll go through the uh, generic charts. There we go, I'm back. Okay, let's go through the generic, man. So this is how uh, UK Met is looking for Monday. And a low pressure, that's going to bring spells of rain uh, through uh, Sunday into Monday. Low pressure sitting over country again on Tuesday. Winds are back into north again. Cold, wet, showering, rinse, repeat into, into Wednesday and Thursday. We're going to get some higher pressure building out to our north and west. Uh, so it is trying to turn dry. However, we've still got low pressure over to the east country. Still pulling wind in from the north northeast direction. So it remain cool and showery right the way up to Thursday, which is uh, as far as we go with the uh, UK Met to 144 hours. Right, this is how the uh, GFS uh, midnight run is looking. Again, low pressure is dominating weather. On Monday, bring spells of rain, cold temperature too. Showery through Tuesday and also into Wednesday as well. Low pressure sitting to our east, high pressure to our north and west. So winds are in from the north, northeast. Going to be cool and showery through there also. Uh, into uh, Thursday, again, it's going to be a uh, uh, cool, showery type weather. Heights are rising to our north and northwest. We are trying to turn things a little bit drier, but low pressure is still centred over Scandinavia, so that's still going to be bring shower, particularly more northern and east areas, and winds will remain in from the north into the middle of next week, so it will remain uh, cool as well. Now, by the end of next week, we begin to back wind around to the west, and we get this ridge building to our southwest. That should bring something a little bit milder and or a little bit slightly warmer, and uh, perhaps a little bit drier as well, especially more southern areas, so still rather unsettled up in the north. Going through the Bank Holiday weekend, again, have this ridge centre just to our west, uh, and southwest into England, Wales, and Ireland. So it should bring a reasonable amount of dry weather to there. Always a little bit showery, perhaps, uh, for Scotland. Not a heat wave, but temperatures, you know, recovering back towards average, I would have thought, with that. However, very quickly, beyond uh, day 10, this is Tuesday the 1st of June, just beyond day 10, again, the high pressure pulls back out into the Atlantic, which looks like we're going to start pulling winds in from the north again. So if we go to the first week of June, Actually, we turn more unsettled and cooler again with uh, a return of northern blocking around Greenland. Low pressure again coming in uh, from the northwest as well. Um, so it looks rather cool and showery uh, for a few days anyway uh, as we go through the first week of June. That's how we finish up with a GFS midnight run, uh, which is to Sunday the 6th of June. And uh, at this point, again, we're trying to bring something a little bit warmer up from the south, but it all, it all looks very flimsy. It's still a lot of northern blocking going on, lots of high pressure uh, around Greenland within the northern latitudes, low pressure out to the rest of Ireland. So I think that probably just might bring a day or so of something a little bit warmer and drier. 
but then we'd be bringing uh, the low pressure uh, back in again. I've got to pause the video there because I've got to get the 6 Z uh, ready, which I've forgotten to do. So uh, I'll just pause the video and I'll see you in around one second. Hey, we're ready with the GFS 6 there. This is it, man. Uh, so, this is for Monday. Again, low pressure is right over top of the country. We'll bring further showers, even up some long spells of rain as well. That low pressure will move to our east on Tuesday, pulling the wind from a cold or very chilly, anyway, northern direction, and it will remain showery too. Into the middle of next week, our uh, heights are rising to our northwest, back to some blocking uh, to the northwest. Low pressure still over Denmark, so still bringing in wind from the north northeast, still quite cool and showery, especially for eastern areas. Second half next week, uh, we tried to get this ridge going look on Thursday, but then this low pressure comes in from the Atlantic on Friday. So just as we come towards the bank holiday weekend, it's turning more and settled on the 6th head. Uh, that's how we look for Saturday next week, first day of the bank holiday weekend. Got a trough of low pressure close to the country, so at the very least it looks showery. And it looks quite cool uh, as well. And through the bank holiday weekend, it remains rather mixed for normal areas anyway. We do get a little bit of a ridge building into the south. Certainly not particularly warm, but I suppose temperatures lift up a little bit. And it, and it does turn a bit drier uh, with the GFS 6Z through the bank holiday uh, weekend. In more extended range, again, looks rather mixed, rather changeable. Low pressure, never far away pushing in from the southwest. So I think it stays pretty cool and showery for the first week of June on the, set, on the GFS 6 there. We finish up again trying to raise the heights from the southwest, but all looking rather flimsy, all looking rather inconclusive. Um, the GFS has definitely backed away from the idea of like a very dry and warm bank holiday weekend into June. Um, period and now it is all looking rather showery and any drier weather looks relatively short-lived between like the rain bands um so the gf has definitely backed away from like a sustained build of pressure into the beginning of june this other gm is looking again very very unsettled on uh monday with spells of rain that low pressure will move to our east of tuesday and wednesday heights rising out to northwest winds in from the north quite cool to cold actually and showering through the middle of uh, next week. Keep the high pressure out to our west northwest to the end of next week. Winds remaining from a north to northeast direction. Again, that brings showers into the east, rather cool and showery. As we head up towards day 10 into Mount Collie Weekend, we have got high pressure ridging down from the north, so it is turning drier through Mount Collie Weekend. Winds remaining from like a northerly direction, so it's going to be pretty cool, especially so at night, I would have thought with that. Temperatures by day, but there's plenty of sunshine around. Temperatures won't be too bad by day, but but it, again, it's all um, it's all being driven by sort of northern blocking. Um, so the wind will remain from quite a cool direction uh, with that. And they've got the ECM as well. So that one has low pressure again on Monday, bringing lots of wet weather with it. Low pressure clears into North Sea through into Tuesday and Wednesday next week. Heights rise around Iceland, back to blocking. Winds in from the north uh, again. So cool and showery through the middle of next week. Stays quite cool and showery into the second half of next week as well. Up towards day 10, we start to get higher pressure and building over country. It's a little bit further south with this high pressure. So out of all the miles, it's probably the driest and warmest for the bank holiday weekend. That high pressure is pretty much centrally located over top of the country. The northerly with that is sort of over Scandinavia. Um, and, and so that, I think, probably is, is the best of it. That's going to be a, a very nice bank holiday weekend indeed. Um, and if it came off, would uh, bring plenty of sunshine. And I would have thought lift temperatures into the low 20s Celsius. But again, the devil is in the detail on this area of high pressure. You've gathered as we've gone through, this, uh, through these models that there is a lot of uncertainty about the exact position of this high pressure, and the position of the high, you know, is going to be very, very critical for the overall feel of the weather. This is a precipitation type forecast based on that ECM run from Spectro.com. So loads of rain, shower long spells rain today. Uh, into weekend, again, stays unsettled. More heavy rain sweeping in on Sunday. Something could be a bit of a washout for many parts of the country. Further showers, they might turn bundery for the early part of next week. Uh, as well. Uh, eventually we start to get something a little bit drier. It takes a long time. Eventually, into back holiday weekend, it does turn drier under that area of high pressure. By day 10 to 40 hours, most places across the country are dry. 
Right, at that point, we'll turn off webcam and we'll have a look at the options on the table within the ECM ensembles for day 10. So this is going to get us to the last day of uh, May, 31st of the month. We have 16 members of the ECM ensembles with road pressures green and Iceland. High pressure to our west-southwest winds will be in the west direction. That's turning drier. And uh, should be a little bit more pleasant with temperature too. 16 have northern blocking and high pressure uh, down over France. In between the gap, we're probably bringing in low pressure. So that's going to be rather unsettled and quite cool. 14, including the operational run, have high pressure uh, over. And just slightly to our north, that's going to be mainly dry and potentially quite warm uh, with that one. And then five down here, still very unsettled with low pressure to our north and uh, winds in. From a west to northwest direction, that's going to be the coolest, wettest option on the table. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. This will get us to the 5th of June. Have 20 members uh, of the ECM ensembles with high pressure uh, over and just to the north. The country winds will be in from the east. That should remain dry and quite warm. 12 with high pressure right over top of the country. That should be mainly dry too. 10 with a ridge through the country extending northwards. That should bring a reasonable amount of dry fine weather and then nine a minority option with deep low pressure owned to western country that could be uh of course the most unsettled option however if you put the 20 there to go with the 12 there and the 10 there there is a strong majority in favor surprisingly of high pressure dominating uh through the first week of june so the ecm on summer seems to have shifted something a little uh something drier and warmer for june We'll have to wait and see. Right, lastly, this is how the CFS uh, B2 is looking for June. This is the 700 millibar height anomaly from the CFS for June 2021. Going for above average heights, high pressure to be right in over top of the country. Suggests a mainly anti-cyclonic month, which you would think would be warmer than average. And mildly going for slightly above average temperatures during June. No signal for precipitation, but with high pressure centred over country, a, dr a dry of an average month obviously would be likely. CF has been very consistent about that for June for, uh, for, for, several, uh, for several days now, a couple of weeks. So we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see how that plays out. But potentially we're in for a drier and possibly warmer June, but we'll see about that. Right, if you enjoyed the video, then please can you smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. You're going to be able to see future weather content. If you do that, tell your friends, family, everybody else who subscribe. Thank you so much for doing this. For guys like this, drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And we're done for our 10 to 14 day. We're going to be back later on having a look at the uh, bank holiday weekend. That will be after 7 o'clock tonight. A lot of updates coming up this weekend. So tomorrow, uh, we're going to be starting off... Uh, of course, with the uh, with the 7 a.m. upload, we'll also have the ECM WF extended look ahead tomorrow as well as weekend broadcast and a 10 to 14 day. Sunday, we're going to have our final summer update. We're going to try to look at some May data for that one. Uh, we'll have Gazzo and Sunny Rambo. I gave a good plug in this video. And uh, we'll be live streaming from 6 o'clock. We'll live streaming some long range on Sunday from 6. So, uh, a lot coming over the weekend. Uh, I'll see you later on for our uh, latest back holiday update. But for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.